There's been a bit of a ruckus in the Warhammer 40k community in recent days after the parent company Games Workshop decided to make some changes to the lore of their fictional universe, and well, they haven't exactly been well received. But what changes did they make to cause such a backlash, <laughs> you might ask? Well, this is where I'm going to have to delve into the lore a little bit, so indulge me. The simplistic view is that Warhammer 40k is set in a fictional future where mankind is locked into a state of constant warfare across the galaxy yeah. and has devolved into a kind of quasi-religious military dictatorship where human life is cheap and all that matters is the survival of the Imperium. To quote the company themselves, in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. Nice. It's a neat setting for tabletop wargaming, and there's an absolute metric ton of lore and history that's gradually oh, yeah. been built up around it over the decades. I don't decades. even know, like, 5% of In fact, it. you can actually ignore the game inside of things altogether and just immerse yourself in the fictional worlds. There's more than enough books, short stories, graphic yeah. novels, video games, and magazine articles to keep you amused for decades. Anyway, one of the most iconic symbols of the 40k universe has got to be the Space Marines. Genetically and surgically enhanced... Yeah, I feel like the one thing that people like recognize from warhammer are space marines and chaos space marines those are like the most iconic ones like i would say necrons are pretty pretty close up there too for soldiers wrapped up in power armor that are deployed to the most critical war zones across the galaxy they're yeah. the very apex of human warfare and the elite amongst them are the custodies the personal bodyguards of the emperor of mankind in short, these are not guys with whom to fuck. Now, there's a lot of lore surrounding Remember this. back whenever I had that transmog set? Well, my, my transmog that I had like that from Legion, where I had like that... Oh my god, bro. It reminds me. That was so good. Space Marines and the Man. Custodies themselves, how they're created and how they function, but the one days. of the most fundamental aspects of their creation is that they're all male. Hence the reason they're all referred to as Battle Brothers. <laughs> I know, right? Who would have thought that an oppressive, xenophobic, totalitarian military regime wouldn't have diversity and inclusion initiatives? The reasons for this- Yeah, it, it does sound kind of stupid whenever you say it. ...are a combination of established lore, the target audience, mm -hmm. and, well, basic common sense. From the lore side of things, the process for creating space marines is only compatible with male physiology, and there's no way to adapt it to work on female bodies. The super advanced technology used to do it is barely even understood by this point in history, and to be honest, there's never been a whole lot of incentive to pursue it because, well, what's the point? Only the strongest, toughest, and most resilient individuals can even hope to survive the process of being turned into a space marine, much less a custodies. To put it into context, less than a fraction of 1% of the population would even be considered as candidates, which pretty much rules women out of the equation, so it always seemed like a question that basically answered itself. Well, and it's just kind of obvious, right? I mean, like, for sure, it's obvious. Uh, also, like, yeah, they have, like, don't, like, space marines have, like, two hearts or something like that? Uh, yeah, it's like a lot of like, like, I mean, Warhammer lore goes crazy. I had to guess, I'd say a lot of this probably comes down to Games Workshop having a <laughs> solid understanding of their target audience and what they yeah, like. Sure. Because, how can I put this? Not all that many girls are into tabletop wargaming. You don't say. There's some, for sure. Yeah. I'm not taking anything away from them. But generally, if I had to pick the people who are most likely Big to be- Big surprise. A game like this is mostly a male space. Yep, that's true. ...into things like Warhammer, well, it's gonna be guys like this. Yep. And for a good 30 years or so, everyone seemed pretty True, happy average with comic that state shop. of affairs. The problem is that Warhammer started to get popular, really popular, mm -hmm. and so it was only a matter of time before it attracted the attention of... MODERN AUDIENCES. Not tabletop gamers playing today, of course, or even just women who happen to enjoy the hobby, but instead activists who totally don't give a shit about anything to do with 40k, but just want to- I wonder to how the people that, that want to add this into, like, every game and want to, like, co-opt Warhammer to, like, add in, like, female space marines and, like, shit like this. I wonder, like, how do you reconcile needing to do that with the fact that every single kid in every single place in the world wanted to be Goku? Like, how, how, do you, how do you make sense out of that? Because it seems like that's like really kind of a fucking disconnect. 
score another little victory in the endless war to dominate every single aspect mm -hmm. of entertainment and culture. Yeah, true. The push to make the world of 40k more mm -hmm. diverse and inclusive has been going on for a while now, and one of the big objectives they've been gunning for is female space marines. Because truly, what woman doesn't want to see herself represented as a psychopathic, eight foot tall, genetically engineered killing machine? It doesn't matter to these people that 30 years of lore says it can't be done. It doesn't matter that most actual gamers don't want to see it happen. It doesn't matter that there's already entire armies of female-only soldiers specifically created to give women more of a presence in the game worlds. All that matters is winning, breaking down another barrier, homogenizing and blending everything together into an indistinguishable grey sludge of inclusion, gleefully taking another treasured thing away from their enemies so they can gloat about it and push for even greater victories next. I did find it kind of funny whenever I was listening to people talking about this on Twitter and one of the people supporting the change actually admitted that they don't play the game they just saw the tweet and they thought it was good which is i think what happens a lot and this is what happens and this is the problem that i think a lot of companies have is that they oftentimes like really massively misjudge community sentiment especially with like hot button issues because a lot of the sentiment comes from places that don't have any interest in the health of the game it's like for a lot of the people that push for something like this, many of, the, many of them probably either uh, don't really give a shit about the game or we're going to play it anyway, right? So it's not really going to increase the amount of people. Coincidentally, don't some streamers have to spin about topic, not play tabletop game? Well, I'm not sure. The community doesn't seem to care, though, at least the subreddit. Yeah, I noticed that. And I did. So like with, with the community not caring, I saw a few posts about it. And it's very hard for me to know like how much of that is authentic or not. Because it seems odd that on YouTube, people are like very commonly upset about this. And on Twitter, people are very upset about this. But then on the Reddit for the actual uh, content, people don't care about it at all. Like that just doesn't make sense to me, right? Uh, and so the first thing I would assume is that it's being moderated or there's like soft moderation that's happening. Yeah, ban for being sexist. Yeah, something like that. Because like it just doesn't... Like, because if I look at, like, the amount of people that are on the subreddit, and then I look at the amount of people that are, for example, like, watching this video, or the amount of people that have seen, like, my video that I did about this, or, uh, you know, like, see the tweets about it, it, it vastly is, is way larger than, like, what the people on the Reddit think. So it's very hard for me to judge, like, what's going on, because I also think that there are people who are, like, culture warriors, and they don't really care about Warhammer, per se. They never really played Warhammer. And so they just view this as a loss for their side, and they're getting mad about it on behalf of Warhammer players. So I feel like it's kind of a weird situation where you have people that don't play Warhammer that are fighting with each other about what Warhammer players want to have, but neither side actually plays the game. It's kind of weird. Proxy wars? Yeah, it's unironically a proxy war. Yeah. Lots of mods are banning people. And that's the thing. Uh, Reddit is people interested in game and lore. Twitter and YouTube are just culture warriors. Yeah, but like, why is that? Because like, for example, on a lot of other subreddits, people talk about culture stuff all the time. And I feel like if, and, and it was so common and so popular that Reddit actually had to delete a lot of the culture war subreddits. Like there were like, for example, like a lot of subreddits about like Donald Trump and like Republican stuff. And they deleted a lot of those. I think it's moderated. Time. And a few days ago, they moved one step closer to their goal with the release of a new rulebook from Games Workshop, where it casually dropped in the fact that female custodies are now apparently a thing. Fuck. That's pretty interesting, considering they've literally never been spoken about before, and everything we know about them suggests that can't happen, but okay, sure. Naturally, fans were confused by this, and when they were questioned about it on Twitter, Games Workshop's response was simple and blunt. Since the first of the 10,000 were created, there have always been female custodians. LIAR! You know, I can't help thinking that you guys are trying to do a bit of rewriting of history here. I can't help thinking that you've finally started to bow to pressure from modern audiences, and you were almost certainly encouraged to do this by a sudden infusion of investment oh, money from boy. BlackRock. I can't help- I, I think that really, uh, yeah, but the lore changes constantly. 
I think that the problem that people had with this isn't really that they did it. It's that they did it in a way that insulted the intelligence of the people who played the game. Because, like, for you to say that, well, they were always there for the whole time, this makes it seem like, oh, you're dumb, you should have known that, right? I don't think that the problem of having the female characters... I don't think that most people really care about it. Like, yeah, there's going to be, like, a fringe of people that care about it. But the truth is, is that I would say, like, at least, like, from my perspective, I would consider it disrespectful. I'm thinking that maybe you're trying to gaslight your own fans into yeah. believing we've always been at war with East Asia. Yeah, and and people are never going to like I'm that. I'm not the only one. But, Drinker, you absolute titan of tabletop tactics, I hear you say. The 40k universe is rife with misinformation, retcons, and rewrites. Things are constantly being changed and added to the lore, so why should this be any different? I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Well, let me stop you there, heretic, because there's a few little misconceptions that I'd like to clear up on this one. The development of the Warhammer universe over the past 30 years is less of a constantly shifting chessboard and more like a telescope that's slowly coming into focus. In the early days, back in the 80s, things were intentionally vague and a lot of details were still waiting to be filled in because the developers hadn't worked everything out yet. But over the years, those details have been filled in with hundreds of articles, books, games and rule sets, and while certain details might have been corrected and expanded on many times over, the general setting, history, characters, rule books, and foundations of the world have actually stayed extremely consistent. So no, that excuse doesn't wash with me anymore, boyo. And as I've I think that there's probably examples of that happening, but I think that probably the majority of examples of that happening are examples of an unreliable narrator rather than the actual company changing the lore. That's what I would assume, but I'm sure that there have been instances where they've changed the lore as well. Sure. In previous videos, the lore mm -hmm. is something you should respect enough to work around instead of constantly changing. Because believe it or not, people actually get invested in this stuff. They buy into the fictional world you've created, and the more you fuck with that, the more difficult you make it for those people to stay invested because they know that at any moment, some prick might decide to completely rewrite it to guy. suit their own selfish bullshit needs. But, Drinker, it's just one little change. Why do you care so much if there's female custodies? That's an interesting question, but here's an even better one. Why did you care so much that there weren't female custodies? Why did it bother you so much that you've spent years complaining about it? Why do you feel so strongly that this thing must be changed? And why do you get so defensive when people question you about it? As Heel vs Babyface so correctly observed, it's really easy to ask the old why do you care so much question once you've gotten what you want. It's easy to defend the status quo once the status quo has been changed to suit your demands. It's Until, of course, point. you've decided right. that it has to change again, in which case you certainly will care about this stuff again. And make no mistake, they will demand that more things Yeah, they, they basically people, they change things, and then they say, why do you care that it's changed? Well, it's like, well, you changed it, obviously you care. It's like kind of like a, it's it's a weird argument change to suit them. And I guess that's the real crux of this argument here. It's the reason Warhammer fans are pushing back so loudly against it. It's not just what the change is, although that's pretty bad all by itself, but it's what it represents that's the bigger issue. It's the sacrifice of artistic freedom on the altar of identity politics. This right here, boys and girls, is the thin edge of the wedge. It's the first little crack in the dam that'll eventually become a gaping hole. Because here's the thing, the moment you make any concession, no matter how talented Tiny, you've already given the game away. You've made it known that you're prepared to bow down to their demands if they put enough pressure on you. And so inevitably, their demands are never going to end. They'll literally never be happy because there's always going to be some other thing, some other piece of problematic lore, some other rule or exclusionary detail that has to be altered to comply with their constantly evolving demands and all in the- I don't think this is like always true, but like as a WoW player, I do feel like that's what happened with WoW. I think that, like, they've just, like, collectively pussified WoW. Like, I'm talking about retail WoW. Like, they've made it, like, so, like, limp dick. It's crazy. It's exhausting. Like, every story is about, like, uh, you know, saving animals, not killing them. Like, it, it's so soft. 
Uh, th there doesn't, like, it doesn't have the same edge and grit to it that it used to. Like, I, I think the best example, and, and it was like, it was like the Sylvanas, like, uh, Garrosh calling Sylvanas a bitch. I think that's, like, one of those, like, uh, I guess, like, mining canary problems that happened, and it signified, like, a much bigger issue, but people didn't realize it yet. And, like, I remember whenever it happened, I was like, this is not good. This is like, what, 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 why would you change this? And people say, well, it's just, a, it's just a, a word. Who cares? Well, if it's just a word, then why did you change it? Why does it matter? Well, I think it's because people do want to change the vibe of things like this. And I think that it's very possible that the same thing could happen to Warhammer. Uh, it is, because I've seen the same thing. I, I saw it happen a while. And, like, now, like, I... I, I don't really feel like as connected to WoW as I did at all. And it's the same thing with like, you know, getting rid of like the pictures of like, uh, you know, like girls in like a bikini on like uh, an inn in a video game. Like, that's crazy. Like, what the fuck? What's going on here? It just, it feels so much different. Yeah, the fruit bowls. Name of inclusion and diversity. Yeah. Because these people don't care about your hobby. They don't care about integrating into a community of like minded individuals. All they care about is that the community bends and reshapes itself to suit them until eventually they bend it so much that it breaks. People like and, that. And that is kind of like, I don't know, as I said, I think that's what's happened with WoW. Like, it, it has. Like, they've, they've tried to attract that audience of people, and I think they've succeeded. I do. I, I think that they've actually succeeded in doing that. And uh, I, I I feel like whenever I talk about it, I I feel like a crazy person because it's like just saying it sounds schizo, but I might be crazy, but I also don't think that I'm wrong. That are complete and utter poison for any hobby, any fandom, any franchise. All they ever manage to do is stir up conflict, resentment and division, driving people away and turning fans against the very company that tries to pander mm -hmm. to them. Because their very reason for existing is to undermine and destroy the thing they claim that they're trying to save. And if you've got any common sense whatsoever, or any love for the fandom that you're so passionate about, you'll think very carefully before bending the knee to them. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Yeah. Go away now. What a good video. <laughs> okay, I'll link you guys a video. I um, I, I mean, I agree with some of this. Uh, I I don't necessarily think like every inclusion is like bad, but I do think that whenever it's being done for a reason that doesn't really enhance the lore, and it's being done in a way that at least like some readers think is condescending. I, I do I do find that to be problematic. Absolutely. Slippery slope? Um, I mean, it's very hard to say, like, is it a slippery slope or not? I mean, slippery slope is inherently a fallacy, but it's not really a, a fallacy as much as it is a... Uh, it's something bad that can happen. And I think that after seeing seeing it happen to WoW, it's definitely made me, like, much more hesitant whenever I see something like this happen. And the reason why is that it makes me feel like at that point, the people that are making the, the content, like they care every time that I see something in the game, I always look at it through the lens of was this an artistic choice or was this a social choice? And that's that's the way that I see it. And maybe that's like bad, but like it does take away like my escapism of it. I don't know, don't know, believe that BlackRock pushes this, but the CEO himself spoke about controlling public opinion. Oh, I, I think that BlackRock pushes it, absolutely. I never said that BlackRock didn't push it. All I was saying is that BlackRock wasn't the cause of it. I think that a lot of people are doing it on their own, too. Like, they don't have anything to do with BlackRock. They're just... Th th this is something that's happening culturally. Uh, you, you, like, I mean, yes, obviously BlackRock pushes it, sure. But that's not the only people that are doing it. The only problem with the situation is they could have used Sisters of Battle. Why change something to fit some narrative whenever there's already something that fits perfectly? I think the reason why is that, um, like, in, in a lot of media and popular media, there's, like, a focus on trying to make it seem like men and women are equal uh, physically, which is something that everybody knows isn't true. But for some reason, people keep trying to push this ideology and I think this is another manifestation of that ideology. It's fantasy? Yeah, no, it is fantasy. I think that really, like, whenever you talk about something being fantasy, I don't really think that justifies doing something uh, in, in a way that, like, contradicts directly with, like, the real world. I, I, I think you can do that. Of course you can do that. But I think that the best types of fantasy are the ones that reflect real life in 
kind of like uh, essential ways and then add fantastical elements to real life. You know, socially equal doesn't mean physically equal. Yeah, exactly. Moving to a media space with serious and series of movies isn't bare minimum just to get the shit through the gate. Yeah, maybe it is. I mean, this is one thing that I've learned, right? And I learned this from WoW is that you can't like you, you can't convince people that this is like a good thing or a bad thing. People will believe this no matter what. You're like I can't like and he can't get people to like Warhammer fans to care about this because I guarantee you a lot of Warhammer fans don't care about any of this shit. They don't give a fuck about it. And it's the same thing that happened with WoW. Is like, I was like, hey, this is happening. It's bad. Everybody laughed at me, said I was stupid. And then here we are 10 years later, and it happened. So one thing like I I've learned, and this is kind of like very pessimistic, but I've learned that I will always bring it up, but I don't really try to push this as much anymore. Because I've learned that people will never... There, there's like a subset of people that will never turn against something that they've spent a lot of money on. And I think that people get so invested into a franchise, whether it's like Warhammer, Warcraft, Magic the Gathering, uh, Star Wars, any of these, they will never turn on it because they've spent so much emotional and physical uh, resources and energy on it that they will never actually think to themselves, this was a bad decision. Because if they realize that it was a bad decision, then they are conceding that they were fooled or that they are stupid.